from the bowling capital of the world, America's number one bowling show. Championship Bowling. From the Firestone Bowlerama here in Akron, Ohio, it's Championship Bowling. I'm Fred Wolf, along with Pat Patterson. On our right, Sam Bach, our statistician on the left. $70,000 in prizes over these weeks, as you'll see, the world's greatest professional bowlers in match game competition. And we got a couple of good ones here again this week, Pat, with Tommy Tuttle and, of course, Ed Bourdais. We've got two very good rolling balls, Fred, and in practice, they've both been hitting that pocket with regularity, so it should be up to the one that carries the most that's going to win today. Well, let's uh, let's have a word from the boys there, talking to the bear hunter first from down in King, North Carolina. Tommy, how are you feeling this week? Pretty good. I've been out hitting the pocket good. You better speak up a little bit. I want to be able to hear everything you say. All right. <laughs> you have been hitting the pocket? Yes, I've been hitting pretty good. No no, uh, no excuses then over the next three games? Is no, that what no you're trying excuses. to tell us? Just knock them down. Just knock them down. Right. How about you, uh, Edward, you know, old boy? I think I'll come out. I'm going bear hunting today. You're going bear hunting? Yes. And you've got yourself a fella <laughs> yeah. there that uh, knows something about that. You better do it with the bowling pin. <laughs> well, i got a gun, too, if I can't do it with the ball. <laughs> All right. I think it'll be a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, stand by now. We're getting ready for the first game of three on championship bowling from Akron, Ohio, right after this interesting word. Tommy Tuttle from King, North Carolina. Winning the toss, electing to start on the left side. All, lane, all games starting from the left. Then the competition moves from right to left. This will put Tuttle going out on 24, the first and third game, as we refer to the right side. He's in. Carries the strike in the first frame. And Pat, as you mentioned, two boys that throw rollers. Yes, they do, Fred. They roll just about uh, as much as you can roll a bowling ball. Ed has a very good rolling ball. And Tommy's we saw there was terrifically a little bit high, but he carried them straight back. Four pin. That ball was certainly in there. Now, when you refer to a rolling ball, Pat, you are you referring that the roll of the ball is between the thumb and the finger holes, no, or is it still these, outside? Both of these balls, uh, boys, the, the roll is outside the thumb hole. There's the cover. Bourdais now moving to the left. Tuttle with a strike. Bourdais with a spare. First frame. One thousand dollars to the winner. $500 to the runner-up. Each bowler makes two appearances, meeting a different opponent each time. Total pinfall for his two appearances will qualify the top two scorers for championship bowling's World Series. Well, Ed's had two in there. He had to settle for the four pin, but he's right back as Tuttle now tries for the first double of the match. There it is. He didn't wait very long. We're going to see a lot of pocket shooting here, Fred. Both boys, as I said in practice, were, were living in that pocket, and they sure haven't changed anything since the show started. Tommy Tuttle, all this kidding about him being a hunter uh, is quite true down in North Carolina. This fellow loves to hunt for bears, rabbits. I'll put a little story about this fellow, about hunting, eating, and bowling. Get it out of there. That's clear. 
That's what I mean by rolling ball, Fred. That ball had a lot of traction as it hit the pocket, and for a lot of people, it had a 5-7 split. But for Tommy, uh, he got those pins coming off the side, and he's got a turkey. Five strikes in a row, and any one game, the boys start a $250 bonus. $50 additional for each strike on top of the five. Borday for the double. Quickly. He's there. So Borday has had three in that pocket. Solid. Tuttle has had a shaker on the right side. One of those hangers. But the one on the left, the third strike, as Pat Patterson mentioned, kicked out the 5-7. It's still Tuttle. The margin, 10 pins. Borday in the fourth. On two. Nice reach. Solid 10. That was too good, Fred. He rolled that ball right from the foul line. It was as perfect as you could put the ball in the pocket. But there's our old nemesis at 10 pin. Oh, it just seemed like about three pins went around that 10. Everything looked high, and the 10 pin wasn't even brushed. Cross lane, little extra speed. The cover. And Ed just throws that fist out there. That puts him 20 pins behind if Tuttle comes up with another strike. There's a difference, though, Fred. Ed's been to pocket four times. He's got only two strikes. Tommy can get a strike here. He'll have four out of four. And it looks good. There it is. I don't know if you noticed, Fred. He was a little faster on that one, and the ball held all the way down. The other one, he rolled out and came back. Yes, his strike there in the uh, second frame was, uh, as you boys say, he was swinging with it out and back, or bellied it, as they say. That one, much faster, and we're up to bonus money. Four strikes. This strike worth $250. Watch it. Come on, baby. This boy's cashing in in a hurry. First five. Yes, he is. Come on, baby. <laughs> Shows no signs of stopping either. Here's Bourdais, Fresno, California, in the fifth. We're almost halfway in the first game. Back in the pocket. In again, another 10 pin. Bourdais had five in a row in the pocket. Has carried two. Tuttle has been in the pocket five times and carried five. Ed swung that one quite a ways that time, Fred. He went out about a border too farther than he did the time before when he struck on the sling. Version by Borday. So at the end of five frames in the first game of three championship bowling from Akron, Ohio, Tommy Tuttle is all the way. Borday is 88 with a spare. It's Ed Borday in the sixth frame. First game. The reach still in the pocket. Carries the so Vorday has not been out of the pocket. Let's take a look, uh, Pat, at Tommy Tuttle with five strikes in a row. Let everybody take a look at this fine, easy delivery of Tommy Tuttle from King, North Carolina. Just a little tight, just a bit tight. That ball was about the same line as the last one, Fred, but he never uh, had the speed on that one he had on the last one, so it jumped just a wee bit at the tail end. And he's got a 4-9 split to shoot out here. Well, he stops at five, the first five. He's picked up $250 in bonus money. The four and the nine, and he goes past the four, counting 28. 18 and 8, and Bourdais can get back into this game in a hurry with another strike. Tuttle moves left. Another strike by Ed now. The next time Ed bowls, it can be a real close match. What looked like a runaway can be real close again now. We're in the seventh. Still in the pocket. Got away with a shaker. Bourdais. Excuse me, Fred. Go ahead. If he'd have had that speed last time, uh, he would have had a strike. He'd have had seven in a row now. 
Here's Bourdais now, who has been in the pocket every frame. He's left a four pin and two ten pins. He's on a strike. This strike would put him within six pins of his opponent, who started with the first five. So an open frame can be quite damaging. That'll have to hurry. All but the two pin. Bourdais went around with that one. He sure did. He swung that ball off quite a bit. You know, there's a gentleman in the audience here this week named Robert Richardson. And you're looking at him right there. You should see him bowl in the Senior Citizens League here at the Bowlerama. Quite a league. And the league members don't feel that they're retired, really. They may be retired from business but not from everyday life and the things that are taking place around them. They enjoy the activity, both mental and physical, that they get from bowling every week. It's lots of fun, not only to meet together, but to actually exercise together, to get out, throw that bowling ball, enjoy the fun and the spirit and the sportsmanship. Leaving the four pin, Ed Day. If you're a senior citizen, you check out the senior citizen bowling leagues in your respective area. It's a lot of fun. Bourdais now with a four pin actually has had one ball out of the pocket and that was very close, leaving nothing but the three pin. We're in the eighth. Bourdais cover. Well, let's see if Tommy can get back on his string again here. He's still got room for bonus money right after that split. And he hasn't actually been out of the pocket yet. That 4-9 was real close. Yeah, it's not easy to get bonus money twice in one game. He can do it. Ten pin stops him. So that takes care of the bonus money for this game. Tuttle starting with the first five, leaving the 4-9 on a good tight pocket hit on this side. And I believe in on that ball... Uh, Pat, he just didn't want to be too tight again. That's right, Freddie. He had a little more zip on that ball and went out just a little bit with it. It hit the pocket good, but it was uh, sliding a little bit too much and it left that 10 pin. What we call a half pocket hit. Tuttle moves left. Still kicking around a 240 game. This fellow was quite a baseball player. Played a lot of semi-pro ball down North Carolina. Scrappy second sacker. Yeah, he's getting away with him on the left side. That was a little bit better rolling ball that for time, Fred. His hand came up a little higher in the follow-through, and the ball was rolling much better than it was the previous time here on 24. If you follow through and get that ball rolling good, it carries a lot of pins for you. Ed Pop Bottles Bourdais. He stands absolutely erect, takes that big breath of fresh air and leaves another 10 pin. Now, if Ed uh, doesn't get too uh, disgusted here, or let's say uh, get down a little because he's leaving the 10 pin, which I guess happens sometimes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's one of Ed's big troubles. He gets tapped up an awful lot. He hits a pocket about 10 or 11 times almost every game. He's very accurate. And he gets a lot of taps. Of course, when you start thinking that uh, that things are going against you and you're getting too many taps, it's uh, a big difference between a great bowler and just a good bowler as to how they accept these breaks so it doesn't affect their style for the rest of the match. That's right, Fred. Ed listens to a, a tape every uh, morning or every afternoon before he goes bowling and sort of gets hypnotized, comes out. He says, it won't bother me, it won't bother me. But uh, when you leave tempers like he's leaving here, I think it has to bother him a little bit. That's his fourth one already. He might have that tape running somewhere. I see him <laughs> shaking his head out there. Borday started with a solid four. Came back with a double. Then left two ten pins. Then a strike. Then he was a little wide, leaving the two pin. Then a four, and he's had a ten in the ninth frame, and here another ten pin in the tenth frame. Now you can throw a game much better than that. This will be his tenth pocket. Tenth ball in the pocket. So he threw ten balls in the pocket. Actually, eleven balls in the pocket out of twelve. 
a pretty good shooting friend for a 204. I think Ed would like to bowl exactly the same way next game and carry just a little bit better. Carry a whole lot better. Here's Tuttle in the tenth now with a chance to take a 40-pin lead. If he can go all the way, he's on the strike in the ninth. Another four pin. Well, he kicked the nine out there. Yeah, I think he was a little bit lucky that he dropped the ball at the foul line that time, Fred. If he had got the ball out with any left, he'd have been on the Brooklyn or on the nose. He got away with that one pretty good. That ball was tight all the way. Well, a great exhibition of pocket, sh pocket shooting here in the first game of three on championship bowling from Akron, Ohio. There are two games to go, $1,000 to the winner, $500 to the loser. These boys naturally thinking of total pins and championship bowling's World Series. Tell you more about that later. So for Tuttle, it's 224. For Bourdais, it is 204. And I'd like to ask Ed a question here. Ed, um, do you have your um, your tape running? Or what does it say on those 10 pins? Any answer? No, I can't say anything right now, Fred. Well, we were just talking, Ed. What what would you do? You're, you're not going to change anything. I'm not going to change a thing. Just hope that I can carry. I think I might be throwing the ball just a little bit too hard. A little too fast? a little bit abnormal for me. I'm more slow than I am fast. I'm at my best when I'm a little bit slower with the ball. We noticed, Tommy, uh, for you, that fifth strike that you got after you had the first, or the, I believe it was the fourth strike, actually, here on the right side. You threw that one um, with a little more zip, if I may say. Did yeah, you, I think you did so. that? I think I got a little slow on that 4-9. You held that line beautifully, and yeah. on the 4-9, you just uh, slowed it down slow, a little bit. Well, we were expecting big things from you boys in the second game, so stay with us here at Championship Bowling. We're at the Firestone Bowlerama in Akron, Ohio, the rubber capital of the world. Ed Bourdais starting the second game, Championship Bowling. Akron, Ohio. Fred Wolf, along with Pat Patterson, four day trailing by 20 pounds. Still in that pocket. Well, maybe Ed has straightened out that 10 pin pass. He'll have to see a 250 game this time, Fred, because he's sure hitting that pocket. It's just a matter of time until he starts carrying. pin was that in front of the five? Do you notice? That was pin probably five? the uh, two pin off the side or the four pin. I don't know which. It happened so fast I couldn't see. Peculiar action to see yes, a pin going in front of the five coming from the left. This fellow can uh, pile up the pins off that kickback sometimes with that center angle. Tommy playing very much to the inside. Interesting here in that uh, Tommy throwing the faster ball of the two is playing deeper or farther inside than Bourdais was throwing the ball slower. And Ed is more to the outside. That's right, Fred. I don't know if Tommy realizes that in practice he was going just about straight down the 10th board on the second arrow on 24. Since the match has started, he seems to be keeping uh, drifting a little left. He may not realize that. Well, he got the five out of there. On the left side, as we refer to it, lane 23, Tuttle has uh, kicked that 5-7 around in real good shape. Yes, he sure has. looking at it. Yes, he has. Five is the last one down. That's one of Dick Weber's great strikes, getting them off the side like that. They don't say how, they say how many. Hmm. Four day now, trying for the double in a hurry. That looks nice better. Nice turn. Ten pin, that's his fifth ten pin. Four ten pins the first game. Here's a ten pin as he tries for his first double in game number two. I thought that ball was going to finish a lot stronger than it did, Fred. It seemed to hang right when it got to the pocket and it left that ten. There's the cover. So it's 20-20 for each man. Tuttle, of course, on the strike. Bourdais not getting his double. Tuttle out in front. The margin. 
is 20 pins. Ed Bourdais won his first title back in 1952, the California State Singles Championship. Went on to become the Northern California Match Game Champion in 58 and again in 60. 5-7, he got the five out, left nothing but the seven. Seemed to, uh, that ball seemed to get away from him. He lofted that one out over the foul line a little farther, Fred. He has been on 23, rolling the ball right from the foul line and hitting the pocket solid. That one looked like he pitched it out just a little farther and it seemed to slide a little farther. Seven pin converted. Four day. In the third is Tuttle. Tommy Tuttle. Let's watch him in slow motion. Tuttle. When you talk about a rolling ball, Fred, it has to be rolling when you hit that high and carry that four off the side like that. That's a, a real good ball. This fellow won the Baltimore Open in 1964, winning close to $15,000 on the PBA Tour and the 65 Winter Tour. He won over $10,000, averaged 208. There's another one. He only bowled in six tournaments on the winter tour. Tommy doesn't make all the events. He keeps himself pretty busy back there in King, North Carolina. He used to be a tobacco inspector years ago. And a great hunter, as we refer to him. We'll tell you a little bit more about that. Bourdais in the fourth. Two, four, five, eight, the bucket. And Ed seems to... Uh, have lost a little of his enthusiasm here, Pat. Seems like he's lost his concentration. He's getting a little aggravated now. When he throws the ball good, he's got a 10 pin. And his opponent's carrying pretty good. Cover. Oh, he picked the two off the five. I believe Ed had that one pegged in the minute it left his hand. He had a feeling it might do it because he pulled up on his pants legs hoping he wouldn't chop, but he Made a perfect shot when he knocked that two off the five. Bourdais now moving to the left in that margin. Getting to a point where Mr. Bourdais is going to only have one way to go. It's going to be that way. Now the breaks, of course, uh, which way they go, often set up a game. Now had Bourdais carried that 10 pin, which was about the same hit he had in the second frame for the double. I believe his third and fourth frames might have been entirely different. Very definitely, Fred. Just a lot of this game is uh, your frame of mind. If you're carrying good, you get the good frame of Come mind. Come on, baby. Right on going. Number four. That's exactly what Tommy's got now, a good frame of mind. He feels like he can strike him where he rolls that ball. Well, we're going over to the bonus window again. This fellow started with the first five in the first game. Boy, he didn't wait for that bonus money. This game, he started with a spare in the first frame and follows it with four, and here we go again. This was the same side that he got his fifth one on in the first game. The turn, he's there. He leaves the four pin on what looked like to be a beautiful hit. No bonus. That was a good hit, Fred. It was just about the same as the one on 24 where the four pin went straight back, but uh, the ball might have finished just a little stronger down there at the tail end than it looked like. I believe Harry Smith calls that the MMM ball. Have you heard that? Ben? No, I haven't heard that one yet. Well, the, M, the MMM ball means make more money. <laughs> Let's take a look at Ed Bourdais now in slow motion, trying for the double. just walked away from that one. That ball, he never gave any room to it at all. He has been light a couple times in that lane, the half pocket 10, so he wanted to get a little higher, but I know he never wanted to get that high. Nice cover, the six and the 10 as Bourdais moves to the left. Yeah. 
It's championship bowling from Akron, Ohio. Each week, you see two of the world's greatest professional bowlers in match game competition. They each make two appearances. Top two men qualify for the World Series. Fourth day with a five pin. He touched it. The wobble, the wiggle, and that's about it. It's still standing. Bourdais unable to get started. There's the wobble and the wiggle put right back on that AMF tournament grade bowling pin that Bourdais having a problem or two with. He covers the spare. He did, Freddie. Went out quite a bit, quite a bit more than uh, he has been going, with with good speed too. There is still life for Bourdais. The spare maker indicates the ball between the one and the two. A beautiful conversion. Boy, there was no doubt about that one. That was just a wide spare for Tom that time, Fred. Made it just the way he's supposed to. I wonder, you folks that watch championship bowling over the weeks, ever feel embarrassed? you non-bowlers, when somebody asks you to go bowling. There's no reason for that. There's a big one for Tuttle in the eighth. You know, there's a first time for everyone, and your friends will recall their first time, I'm sure. The ball might feel a little heavy. The release might feel awkward. But after a while, you get used to it. The more you bowl, the more your confidence, the better your game, the more fun you have. Get out. Try it. Well, there's a new one. The 4-7. Four, 4-7. Seven. Four, seven. It's a four pin with a little bit of company there. Pins just go straight in the air on that kind of hit. That's one of Ed's favorite sayings, Fred. Fours and tens. Tens and fours. Fours and tens. Tens and fours. And uh, we can see why. He leaves quite a few of them. Well, he's had a lot of balls in that pocket. He's had five ten pins. And a couple of sevens. Now the four seven. Tuttle left a solid four nine on five in a row. There's another ten pin. Tommy left a solid four on four in a row this game. Still sitting on 256. Tuttle open with 224. go back to the second frame of this game, Pat, and say that had he just uh, nudged that ten pin on one of those in-betweeners and carry, this game might have taken on a completely different uh, situation. It sure could. You've got to, everybody gets the same amount of breaks, but it's getting them in the right spot that counts, and it sure hasn't uh, gotten the breaks at the right time. Tuttle for the double. Doesn't kick the five. Tommy's a little faster than he normally is, Fred, and that's why he's not quite getting that ball back solid to the pocket. But he's having a lot of luck with that thin hit, so he may as well stay there. Well, he's done a great job putting his strikes together. Five in a row the first game with one open for 224. He's had four in a row this game. Going into the tenth and a chance still for 236. Right back, solid 10. Well, that's only about the second one that Tommy's had, so uh, you can feel fairly fortunate there. That was a beautiful ball. If Tommy can come back with nine pins this frame, uh, now Fred, he's going for a triplicate, like two 224s. Eight for 220 to 
223, Fred. 223. In the tent, out and back. And board day carry. Two beautifully rolled balls, Freddy. Roll them all the way. That's the way you had normally bowls there. One or two bad breaks when you start changing your game around to try to carry it. It fouls your whole game up. Another nice one. Well, there were three beautiful strikes, and all Bourdais can get out of this one is 179. Three strikes in the tenth. Well, bad if Bourdais can hold that line now for the third game. Certainly, he's not too far out of this match at this time. With one game to go. Well, he's quite a bit down, Fred, but you never know. Uh, he can come up with a 300 game or a 289 that picks up a lot of pins. He's sure been around that pocket. It's just a matter of getting that ball to carry. I'm going to ask uh, Ed a question here. We've been talking 10 pins uh, most of the time. Uh, Ed, you've looked at six of them. I'm overturning the ball a little bit, Fred. Uh, the last three balls, I kind of swung straight up with my arm, which is a good swing for me to get the straight uh, roll, no side roll. And Tommy, how about you? You're sitting on a good total here, 447. You need a little uh, 240, 250? Yeah, I need about a 250. Have you got it? You got it in you? I hope so. All right, let's I hope see. it comes out. Let's, let's see if you can get <laughs> I know it. I in me. <laughs> All right, now, we're expecting a lot of activity here in the third and final game of this match from Akron, Ohio. It's championship bowling where you see the world's greatest pro bowlers in action every week. Akron, Ohio, the home of the Professional Bowlers Association. It's Tommy Tuttle, the youngster from King, North Carolina. Starting off the third and final game, Tommy has a lead of 64 pins. He goes in with 447. Bourdais is 383. Set it too high, 47. Crowd of that one. Yes, he did. That's about the first time he's been high on that lane. He's been hitting 23 real well. Tommy Tuttle, who's had one open frame, a solid 4-9 on top of his five in a row that he started the first game with. He had a five-bagger the first game, a four-bagger the second game, trying for bonus money, left a solid four. Four day, three in a row in this lane to finish the second game. Once more, right back in the pocket. Four beautiful strikes here on the right side. He hasn't changed a thing, Fred, from the 10th frame of last game, if he can just keep going now. Yeah, it's a lot of pins to give uh, Tuttle. A lot of pins to give anybody. It's a lot of pins to give me, Fred. Well... Even you. I would agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. Never. Not enough. Two, four, five, eight, four day just didn't get there. So again, the left side is giving it, I believe, more trouble than the right side. This time, he covers. The AMF square maker indicated the ball between the two and the five, and Bourdais carried it out beautifully. It is a former AMF mechanic. He certainly knows what's going on back there at all times. He should know how to have that ball like that tin pin over. Here we come. A lot of action, but the seven pin, slightly off spot, and the AMF pin spotter, of course, will put that pin right back off spot. One of the regulations of the American Bowling Congress that the AMF machine does so well. All competition is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. All competition, cross lane. Covered by Tuttle. We can watch those three white dots spinning around there. Pat, are you... Uh, I know Bill Bennett is very conscious of the amount of revolutions that a ball makes 
the guidance system that they talk about. Do you watch this very closely? Uh, I don't think my eyes are good enough for it. I had to ask Bill Bonetta how many times my ball turns over. I couldn't quite uh, catch up with those dots. He told me I, I get 10 revolutions, so I have to believe him. There's another seven pin by Tuttle. Not getting enough of that pocket. Those dots will, will tell you quite a story, though. If you get them rolling right, you can see it. Tuttle in the third. 1938. Two seven pins. He had a 4-7 in the first frame, and he covered. You can tell when the ball's rolling there, Fred. As Tommy throws the ball, the dots are on the right side of the ball. As it goes down the lane, they turn over to the top. And when it goes into the pins, they're going end over end, right into the pocket. And that's when the, the ball is rolling. It's about as strong as you can get it. There's a new one, the 3-6. That's the first time we saw that this, this match. Yeah, they eased up quite a bit on that one. I he was thinking probably about uh, Almost missing the hit then on 23, so he compensated for it on lane 24. Look out. Well, Ed has uh, certainly lost his line. I believe he's lost his uh, concentration as he misses another spare. He missed one in the ninth frame, the 10 pin of the second game. He picked the two off the five. And he left up the two, four, five, eight. And now the three, six, back in the pocket. Beautiful. And that time, of course, he went left on the miss, which was a little different situation than he had in the second frame when he moved left on the strike. Come on, baby. The two, the five. Well, it looks like Tommy's having a little trouble getting lined up this game, Fred. I guess maybe he figures he's so far ahead he can relax, but uh, it's a bad thing to do when you're working for total pins for the six games. Total pins, very important. The top two scorers in two appearances qualify for the World Series when they join Dick Weber, the national all-star champion. Be careful. Weber's. And, of course, Billy Hardwick, the winner of the Firestone Tournament of Champions. These four bowlers will compete in the World Series of Bowling with an $18,000 added purse. So it should be a great four weeks as we wind up championship bowling here in Akron, Ohio. Be careful, boy, he set up that one beautifully. That looked like it might be high, Pat. He had enough zip on that one. It stayed uh, right there all the way down. It was just as solid as you could put the ball in the pocket. Oh, he went way out with that one. Borday, the 2-4-5 with company. 2-4-5 with a man in motion. And that 7-pin is... It's the tough pin, actually, that's, here. Uh, this that's thing. not the easiest spare in the world, a 2-4-5. It's very easy to chop. He's going between the 2-5. Look out. And he picked. <laughs> <laughs> I just said he hasn't had a spare in 10 years. I'll have to disagree with her. I think he's had it someplace along the line. Tuttle at 76 with a strike. Bourdais open in the fifth with 75. Bourdais wide open in the sixth frame now. The six. The seven and the ten. And what a shot after Bourdais just missed an easy spare. Well, that was much easier than picking a spare, Fred. Besides, he got a bigger hand for it. <laughs> I think he's a showman. Was that an easier shot, Ed, than the spare you just missed? <laughs> Here's Tuttle. We're in the six. Tommy on a strike. He has a big five frames coming up. The difference between a nice 670, 680, or a 650. Here it comes. He's got it. 
And we're on our way. Possibly this fella can cash in with bonus money again here in game number three. He started the first game with five. A spare and four in the second game before a solid four pin stopped him. Now he's on two as he moves left in the seventh. Tuttle out in front, a comfortable margin. But Tommy thinking of pinfall. Once more. Come on, baby. Yes, sir. That's going to the bank. That ball must have ears. He said, come on, baby, and it did. So Tuttle now up around 660. If he can fill the last three, every strike gives him 10 additional pins. Nice, easy roller. Boy, Dave kicks out the four pin. You know, Fred, the boys on the tour these days are uh, working a whole lot with having the weight of the bowling ball in the right place, not just top weight, but the weight situated in the right place. And Ed is one of the authorities on this. A lot of the boys are having Ed uh, fix their balls up for him and try to get the right roll. It's a big thing in carrying the pins. I understand he, he drills a lot of balls yes, for he the does. boys on the tour. There we are, a double for Bourdain. Well, a lot of people can't believe that a half ounce or an ounce or an ounce and a half in any given spot on a bowling ball can make that much difference. You believe it does. Oh, yes, it makes the ball roll a lot different. We're in the eighth. Tommy Tuttle from King, North Carolina. Boy, oh, here's a big one. He lines it in there. Too high. He doubles. Oh! How about those apples? That was a good hit, Fred. The pins just fell a little funny that time. Yeah. That infectious <laughs> smile of Tommy Tuttle. You know, folks, when you bowl, sometimes you can come up with such wonderful smiles like that that certainly are so good for you. Why don't you try it? It makes you feel like you'd like to. Oh, he doesn't get there with that one. Didn't take advantage of the lucky one, the two and the five. And that was for bonus money. I think Tommy rushed the foul line a little bit that time, Fred. The MMM ball. <laughs> I think the lucky strike he got bothered him uh, more in the in the next frame. Sure seems like it. That was the MLM ball. Make less money. 2-5 ball between the two pins. The AMF spare maker just showed him how to do it. Follow the arrow. So Tuttle picks up the spare in the ninth. There will be no more bonus money for Tuttle. Bourdais still has a chance. He's on two. He needs this one. Come on, Ed. Give it the turn. Ten pin again. That is number seven for Bourdais. Seventh ten pin. You know, Fred, when you figure each ten pin could be worth anywhere from ten to uh, 33 pins, according to whether you pick it or not, seven ten pins is about uh, 100 pins anyhow. It could have a real good total had he been carrying a little better. There's a conversion. In the ninth, we go into the tenth frame. Tuttle sitting on another 220 game. If he doesn't double in the tenth, he can be quite consistent here. 224, 223. More day. In the tenth, third game. Too high. The six pin. Ed has averaged 208 for 24 games. On championship bowling, he's had one 700 total. His high single game was 255. Covering the count here, 183. So it'll be under his average with about 560. You know, forest fires are this nation's most shameful waste. Please be careful when handling cigarettes or matches or when building a small fire. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Well, Bourdain ends it with a beautiful, solid pocket strike for 183 in the 10th, third game. Still a 230 game with two strikes. Come on. Doesn't get there the two pins, so Tuttle will settle for a third 220 game. Well, if he picks a spare Fred and then comes back with another nine pin comp, he'll have what we call a step ladder. A step ladder. 222, two, 223, two, 224. Or actually, 
in reverse, 224, 223, 222. Well, he was up there seeing he's coming down. That's quite a rut, isn't it? Beautiful rut. Careful. All right. Tommy Tuttle with the spare. Nine pins. We'll give him 222. The fellow who prefers hunting to bowling, but he likes to eat better than hunt. And he says he can buy more eats by bowling, so he bowls rather than hunts. And that's quite a lie. Go! Two, two, two. Well, Tommy Tuttle shoots the ladder here on championship bowling in Akron, Ohio. Well, that's, I'd, I'd like to ask him, because we talked about that. Tommy, after the one that you showed us here on uh, lane 24 for your fourth strike to put you in bonus money, to put you in contention for bonus money, did that actually bother you a little when you moved to the left? You had to be thinking about that strike. You don't get many well, of those. Well, I was going to be sure that I didn't do it again because I didn't figure I'd care two in a row like that, so I got it out too far. Like some of the boys say, the hit was all right. The pins just <laughs> fell funny. Yeah. <laughs> I just over-adjusted on 20, 23, I think. You over-adjusted after you got a <laughs> yeah, strike. Yeah, this is punching nose, so I got this one out a little bit too far. Mm -hmm. Tommy, what, what is the real story on this uh, hunting thing? I know the boys do a lot of kidding, and as long as we have a minute or two here, you, you actually are, a, or you do still hunt down yeah, in North Carolina? Yeah, I hunt a lot. I got a farm down in North Carolina, and I hunt quite a bit on it. Mm-hmm. What do you hunt? What do you... Oh, rabbits and squirrels. Rabbits and squirrels. Right. Do, do you bring a... They tell me you have a coonskin cap that you take along on the tour <laughs> once in a while. Is this true? No, that's not true. <laughs> it's not true? <laughs> no, they just, they just call me Daniel Boone, but I don't wear the cap. They call, they call you Daniel Boone. <laughs> well, we missed that one. We could have. What about it, Ed? It uh, looks like uh, Tommy had the sights uh, here on a little 660. He shot the ladder. You understand what we mean by shooting the ladder? Well, Tommy went hunting today and shot a squirrel. And, uh, <laughs> and there was a big Lord squirrel. Ed. And I, I tried to shoot a bear, but I forgot to load the gun, Fred. <laughs> okay, Ed uh, and Tommy, uh, stay here for just a moment. We have the presentations coming up. It's all on championship bowling from Akron, Ohio, the rubber capital of the world. Here are the final results for Ed Bourdais, 204, 179, 183. His total is 566. For Tommy Tuttle, we kind of missed the ladder there. We thought he shot the ladder. 224, 223, and then another 223. His total, 670. Did you enjoy this, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Very fine performance. We look at the statistics. Bourdais had 13 strikes, and Tommy, 18 strikes. And Tommy, you sure put them together. Five in a row the first game, four in a row the second game. Four in a row, the third game. That's right. I just need to put two more together, one on that four and one on the other four. And you, yeah, you, you've been <laughs> in that bonus money pretty good. That's right. Well, here's your $250 bonus money for the first game, $1,000 as the winner. And for you, Ed, $500 as the runner-up. Well, Tommy, in two appearances for the World Series, uh, about 30 more pins there. We just might have had you around here. You That's still right. possibly might see you. I could have carried the 4-9 on when I had five in a row. I'd had a shot at it, I think. You, that could have been a lot more pins there. You might have got two, three more. Right? Well, I come back with one then, you know, mm -hmm. on 23, so that'd give me a 250 game. So I'd have had 20 more. I'd like to uh, talk to, uh, thanks, Don. I'd like to talk to Ed here for a minute because, as Pat Patterson pointed out earlier, that you have sort of become the... Uh, the bowling ball specialist for the pro tour. They tell me that you can drill a bowling ball and put a half ounce here or yes, one yes. ounce there, and you have come up with some ideas as where this ounce should be. Yes, I Could have. Can you sort of briefly tell us? Well, uh, it's kind of uh, using the weight to coincide with the roll of the ball, Fred. Uh, a lot of times you have a ball drilled and you uh, throw it and it rolls real good and you go get another ball and you drill it exactly the same way and it doesn't roll the same. Well, this is because the weight distribution wasn't the same in the ball. Well, I understand that you have a, you, uh, you work it out to a formula that you look at the roll that a bowler has and then you put the weight where right. you think yes, the weight should yes. be to coincide with the roll that the bowler Give them an extra hitting power when it hits the pin so that it pushes the pin straight back and rather than out and around. In other words, then a 16-pound ball, by distributing one ounce or a half ounce in the right place, would make this much difference. As much difference as day and night. Well, that's something for you bowlers to think about out there, that half ounce or that one ounce. Gentlemen, good luck to you. Hope we can see you Thank again you, on ladies. Championship Thank Bowling, you. Tommy Tuttle Fred. and Ed Bourdais. Ladies and gentlemen, two of the greatest. Good luck to you.
repeating it's Ed Borday with 566, the winner, Tommy Tuttle with 670. Sure hope you can join us here again next week at the Firestone Bowlerama in Akron, Ohio, when we'll have two more of bowling's top professional stars in a three-game match competing for a prize fund of over $70,000. So speaking for Pat Patterson and myself, this is Fred Wolf. Just keep them bowling out there. It's great fun. You know why? Because bowling makes you feel like you'd like to. Championship Bowling by King Louie. to thank AMF for their cooperation in helping us produce championship bowling.